Today on Adventures with Peps we are doing another beginner's guide speed painting space marine chapter thingamajiggity for Warhammer Wednesday and it is the Celestial Lions. They have so much lore on them. I did not appreciate them at all until I started reading through all this stuff. I know there's been a few stories about them but damn their fandom page just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So whilst I am painting this uh, Stormhost Silver over the entire model, I'm going to start reading my way through it. So the Celestial Lines is a loyalist successor chapter of the Stoic Imperial Fists raised in the 38th millennia during an unknown founding. Though some Imperial scholars suspect it may have been the 23rd founding. Following the 25th founding at some time in the latter half of the 40th millennium, the Celestial Lions became part of a trio of Space Marine chapters that included the Emperor's Spears and the now extinct Star Scorpions as part of the Adeptus Valeri, I think that's how that's pronounced, better known as the Sentinels of the Veil. Vale. These three chapters were charged with the sacred duty to stand sentinel over the scattered worlds of the sector of space known as Air Alara's Veil vale, in a backwater region of the Ultima Segmentum. Since its inception, the chapter has had a long and glorious history, stretching back over 4,000 Terran years, but events set in motion over five solar decades ago during a routine assault on the world of Qatar nearly proved to be the chapter's undoing in the wake of the Third War of Armageddon, from which less than a company of celestial lines emerged intact. Targeted by a faction of the Inquisition to serve as an example of what happened to a chapter that stood against them in imperial politics, the Celestial Line survived only due to intervention of the Black Templars, fellow Sions of the Primarch Rogal Dawn, along with my executioners, so this chapter really fits in with the Space Marines I like. A few surviving Celestial Lines returned to their homeworld of Elysium in Alara's Vale under the command of their new chapter master. Dubaku, that's how that one's pronounced, to begin the painstaking process of rebuilding the chapter's numbers back to full strength. Later, after the birth of the Great Rift in the era Indomitus, the chapter became involved alongside the Emperor's Spears with defending the Veil vale from the assault by a great Chaos war host called the Exilarchy. Ex Exilarchy? Exilarchy. I'll get there in a minute. Assault by a great chaos war host called the Exarchy. They were under the command of a war band of heretic space marines called the Pure, who were chaos corrupted remnants of the Skadar Scorpion chapter that once was part of the trio. So, they've really had some bad luck over the years. And as you can now see in the video, I am using Nasdrag Yellow over the silver to help produce a nice golden colour which is what they are famous for on their armor. They're quite simple. It's gold, blue, black, a little bit of red. Very nice, very simple. I like it a lot. But yeah, seriously, these guys have so much background. Now, I enjoy Executioners. This is mostly due to the Badab War. And I love their fluff from that. Also like the Black Templars. Never collected them, but I've, I enjoy the stories that I've read about them. And now that I've read about the Celestial Lions, I'm keen to get some more of their stories. I have read the Emperor Spears book that mentioned them kind of as a bit roll. Now this use of Nasdrag Yellow over a silver base coat, I've done many times on this channel. You probably don't remember, it's been a while, but my executioners have a lot of this on their armor. Plus their armor is painted in a very similar way but for them I used lead belcher to make it look a little bit darker but I knew I wanted a bright bold blue I knew I wanted a bright bold gold so I knew I had to start with that silver base but I didn't paint it on super neat or anything it just I slapped it down just made sure I had all the armor covered and I'm gonna let the washers do the rest it doesn't really matter if the recesses are still black because it's just gonna add to the shadows to the depth on the model the only thing looking at the finished piece in my hand that I regret is the pistol holster. I should have painted that white so that when I did the brown speed paint it looked fully brown. Instead I left the silver. I was being lazy, I'll be honest. So the holster ends up looking shiny at the end. Not a, a look that I'm disappointed by in any way, shape or form. 
just I think I could have done better in that one scenario. This is all about speed painting. In total, this model from start to finish with dry time is about 16 to 20 minutes. That includes me trying to work out what colors I wanted to use, which surprisingly was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I wasn't really sure what color to go with to try and make this gold. Like I said, we used this in the past over a lead belcher, so I knew it worked, but because lead belcher is a darker silver, it, uh, it gave it a different effect. It came out more brassy bronze on my executioners. I wouldn't say this is a million miles away from a brass once I finish it, but I think it works well enough for the celestials. Right, I think we are reaching the end of this. So as you can see, I've been a bit messy in places, so I am off camera going to go around, clean up the silver, neaten everything up so it doesn't look too terrible, and we will be back in a moment. Right, I've cleaned up everything, as you can now see. It's starting to dry. I like it. It's not a bright over-the-top gold, which maybe a lot of people would do, but I think it's going to work. I then grab a Tesla blue, I think that, or Talisar. Talisar blue, that makes more sense. Let's go Talisar. Yeah, I'm very confused. There's different colors all over the internet for these guys. Um, there's some that seem to have a proper brassy gold, kind of like the Blood Angel Sanguinius Guard, or at least how I would imagine them. And then they have like an ultramarine blue color scheme for those parts. To me, that's kind of where my gold is leaning by the time I finish this model. Uh, but then there's others that have used a flat, straight up flat paint. It's not metallic. It's kind of a, a sandy yellow, I guess you would describe it. And there's others who have brighter golds it's very much, I think, up to the painter <laughs> at this stage. Everybody's got their own way of doing it, and I love that. But I think I'm gonna lean towards the more brassy golds. Things that, in my mind, seem a bit more realistic for an army at war. Though I do like the flat, non-metallic yellows that I'm seeing. The something about metallic paint don't like it. It's up there with black. Um, it's just, I, it's not something I enjoy painting. Just don't enjoy painting metallic. If given an option, I probably, and if I'd have found it sooner, I probably would have gone with the flat color scheme. I was really impressed by it. It's uh, by a guy, Azrael's Bits Box. I don't really know much about him. Uh, it doesn't look like he's been blogging since 2017, so I don't know if he's still around. If somehow he finds this video and hears his name, I would love for him to say hello down below, but I, I doubt that's going to happen, sadly. Oh, actually, I told a lie. The last Celestial Lions thing he did was the day that I just said, what did I just say? Uh, December 12th, 2017, but he actually was blogging in August 2024. So maybe there is a chance he'll see it. Looks like he's moved on to Marvel and some zombie side. He's doing some beautiful artwork. Wow, I'm going to drop a link to this guy's blog in the comments. Uh, go check it out. He's doing some real nice stuff. That's quite comical. You find something new whilst... Uh, whilst enjoying looking at other people's work. Right, so blue is on the shoulder pads, it's on the helmet. If I was feeling super confident, I could have done knee pad, but I didn't think there was any real need. Uh, the image I'm actually copying from is the old Space Marine, and he has two gold knee pads, so I'm not too worried about actually doing that properly. There you go, he is moving along at a rate of knots. There is not many steps to this. I do cut some corners. I'm going to leave the skull on his chest a silver. You could easily do that bone as an extra pop of colour. His eyes, I'm going to do red like his bolt gun. And then I cover everything in a brown wash just to darken him down a little bit. So really, we are already in the final stages. 
Like I said, this is a quick and dirty paint scheme. I'm not going to apologize for that. This is to get your army tabletop ready. And I think if you threw this down on a tabletop in front of people, there's going to be no complaints from them unless they're absolute assholes, in which case you don't want to be playing against them anyway. And then we have now reached the stage where I'm doing some shading. So it's snake bite leather. I am going to use this on the gun holster, but a lot more heavier. But I've watered it down right now and I'm just catching the sort of ribbed areas of the armor. Could also do this black to add more of a contrast, but I'm quite happy using this snake bite leather. I imagine they try and match it to the armor plates so it all looked uniformed. This is just a nice simple step. But yeah, like I said, this wouldn't take long at all. If you wanted to take it another step, you could dry brush a gold over the top of the armor before doing the blue. Just to help pop those edges a bit more, you could also do a more solid blue rather than a metallic, just to make it stand out more. But realistically, if you had an army of these painted like this, and then your characters had a few extra steps done, I think you'd have a beautiful, unique army on the table. Not many people paint celestial lines, which is a real shame. They deserve a lot more love now that I've read their story. But there you go. This is pretty much another Space Marine chapter in the bag. Now, my list. I need more names on this list. I'm probably going to do Red Scorpions next. Probably Emperor Spears at some point, and then Dark Kraken. Probably in that order. Something like that. But I, I want some more names, so send me some more Space Marine chapters that you want to see done in Speed Paints. I'll see if I can complete them for you. I do enjoy this. I've got an entire shelf of Space Marines. I know I'm not going to collect a proper army, so I'm not worried about having them all painted up as executioners. So it's definitely fun to pick up the odd model, try out a new scheme, learn something about them, see if they're an army that I could maybe do in the future kind of want to do a kill team of different space marine chapters maybe how the death watch are where different chapters come together but they're not death watch-esque they just happen to all be heading to this planet for a mission of some sort and end up joining forces against an orc commando unit or you know something like that could be sat on armageddon and they're trying to find some gene seed that got left behind more about the narrative these days than actual straight up combat so anything that i can make a mini story out of i think i'm happy to try that out but we are now on to the final step before putting the dark wash over in some basin and it is just flesh terror red i'm going to put it in the eye lenses put it over the bolt gun and then we can go into the glamour shots so i hope you've enjoyed a little bit of a rough week on views i'll be honest it's back to school so not many people watching also took a week off the holiday so i'm getting back into the throw of things uh, as always make sure you check out the discord link below and join us over there we've had a few new members join them which was great to see and if you fancy buying me a cup of coffee it's starting to get cold here in ottawa uh, i'd love a nice warm hot cup of coffee for the walk to work you could join the membership group. The benefits are down below. But ultimately, you get to name a character in Sector 102. Can't say fair other than that. Uh, it's a monthly donation, I guess, of uh, $2 a month. And in exchange, I'll create a character for the donator. Plus, you get to pick the character. It's not just all on me. You'll have to do some things. You'll have to reach out to me and have a chat. But I hope you will consider joining. And until next time, cheers for watching.